You're watching Truth vs. Hype. We are at the Devnar Abattoir in Mumbai, one of the country's biggest, but now completely abandoned after Maharashtra toughened its anti-beef laws. A week later, Haryana has done the same. Over the next 30 minutes, we take a hard look at the claims being made to justify these bans. One minute arguing that it has nothing to do with politics, but it is to save Indian agriculture. The next minute suggesting that it has to do something with the majority sentiment. And also that it's only these tough bans that will crack down on an illegal and thriving beef trade. Are these claims based on truth or hype? Go, Humara was sacred, Jo animal hair or Mata Gitana Puja Jata. I could cut. Watch the news and it seems what's been banned is the killing of the sacred Gaumata. The reality though is somewhat different. Cow slaughter has been banned in Maharashtra and Haryana for decades. What Maharashtra did permit was the slaughter of the male cow or the bull only after it was certified to be unfit for agriculture. Maharashtra has extended the ban to bull slaughter. Now only the slaughter of buffalo is allowed. Meat suppliers say it's left them with little choice but to strike. Sir, in this slaughterhouse, there were daily 400 animals cut. There were 50 buffalo and 400 bulls. And this is the local consumption. More bulls cut. More bulls cut. Near about 80 percent bulls cut. So that's why you have stopped it. So if we don't stop it, it will be difficult because there is a shortage of buffalo. So its price will be double double. Now when it comes to double double price, बुचर खरीदेगा बफलो को तो मार्केट में उस हिसाब से बेचेगा तो पब्लिक के अंदर भी एक गुस्सा फैलेगा कि ये बुचर जो हैं इस चीज का नजायज फायदा उठा के ज़्यादा मार्केट में प्राइस ले रहे हैं। So what's the rationale behind banning the slaughter of bulls? As soon as we got our government in Maharashtra, I can say first major decision, one of the few. I asked Kirit Somaya, the BJP MP from Mumbai, who's seen as instrumental in getting the Maharashtra bill revived. It certainly help a farmer to strengthen his, because the electricity or pump, it is not yet available. Okay. Now we are talking about the bioelectricity also. So this is a combination. This is a combination. Let me clarify it. Yes. There is a religious feeling, there is no doubt in it. Okay. Yes, it is there. Given the sensitivities of invoking religious sentiment to amend a piece of legislation, political parties often piggyback their demand for tougher anti-beef laws onto groups that claim to be working only in the area of animal cruelty or farmers' interests. One of the most influential, the Vinayog Parivar up the stairs in a small flat in a Mumbai suburb. A Jain-run trust, it's over the past two decades quietly provided the legal arsenal for states to impose tougher anti-beef laws. How many states have you helped draft their law? Five states. Five states. So apart from Maharashtra? Gujarat, okay. Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Delhi. All of these you helped draft? Yes. And all of these states now have... They have these laws. Similar they laws claim no political party. affiliation. Do you have anything to do with the BJP, Sang Parivar? Yeah, absolutely anything? not. Not at all. We just spotted this picture of your founder with the, the VHP head, Ashok Singhal. He had come for uh, uh, some program hmm. and we, uh, they happened to know each other personally. Their only interest, Indian the agriculture. Areas. The cow dung is the basis of organic farming. Right. And, and what about what about urine? Urine also is used as pesticide, directly also, as well as it is treated with neem leaves and certain other. Uh, but that uh, must be a very very small fraction of farmers who use cow urine in this the, country. The awareness has been growing over the years, and maybe now at least thirty percent of the farmers hmm. are using organic pesticide made of cow dung, uh, cow urine. 30 to 40, 30 percent? 30 percent of the farmers. Across the country? Across the country. But data from the Standing Committee of Parliament of 2012 suggests that the use of biofertilizer in India is only 16 percent. It doesn't mention what percentage of that is the urine neem mix. Moreover, there's little evidence to suggest that permitting the slaughter of infirm cattle hurts Indian agriculture. States that have the most liberal laws in cattle slaughter like Andhra Pradesh, West Bengal and Tamil Nadu 
remain agriculturally high performers. Maharashtra farm leaders say that the ban actually hurts farmers' interests. So, if the guy buys the land, if he goes to the slaughter house, then it's because of the reason that we get the money. If he goes to the slaughter house, then it's because of the reason that we get the money. If he goes to the slaughter house, then it's because of the reason that we get the money. If he goes to the slaughter house, then it's because of the reason that we get the money. If he goes to the slaughter house, then it's because of the reason that we get the money. If he goes to the slaughter house, then it's because of the reason that we get the money. If he goes to the slaughter house, then it's because of the reason that we get the money. If he goes to the slaughter house, then it's because of the reason that we get the money. इस पे आप क्या कहेंगे मेरा उनसे उन लोगों से हाथ जोड़ के बेनती है कि जो मुझे स्लाटर हाउस चलाने वाला कसाई जितना पैसा देता है उतने पैसे आप दीजिए और लेके जाइए बीजेपी हेल्दी बुलक्स इवन काउज आर बीइंग स्लॉटर्ड इन एबर्टवाज व्हाट वाज हैपनिंग एवरीबडी नो नो बडी वाज एबल टू स्टॉप इट taken to the slaughter of another thing without getting the uh, anything and everything available there but to rig the systems at an abattoir like devnar is not that easy the trade and slaughter of animals might be controlled by private hands mainly the qureshi community but the abattoir is run by the city municipality कुछ लोगों के दिमाग में ऐसा है कि काउ को भी यहाँ घुसा देते हैं और नहीं नहीं सकता ऐसा के साथ काट देते हैं ऐसा स्लॉटर हाउस में कभी हो नहीं सकता ऐसा काउ तो हमारे उसमें बाउंड्री में आ ही नहीं सकता अभी तक 20 साल से मैं इधर काम कर रहा है ऐसा कभी भी हमने कभी ऐसा सुना भी नहीं चेकिंग and you have enough manpower to uh, check each yeah, yeah, uh, each yeah. one we have got 15 officers so obviously because uh, the devnar abattoir is shut we have no way of actually verifying for ourselves whether the claims that we just heard about the inspection of animals is genuine or not but here's the thing even those who are arguing that there is some sort of wrong doing uh, that goes on here do not have uh, any concrete proof either apart from the anecdotal since devnar is closed we filmed the verification procedure at a government run abattoir in a slaughter house near hyderabad i am in charge for the veterinary officer for this uh, chinginchella slaughter house mostly we first we will do anti mortem exam of the animals if these comes normal then it is fit for uh, slaughter the pro ban activists also allege that the beef exporters who run private slaughter houses also secretly slaughter cows to be sent abroad as exports as proof they point to india's rising meat exports that the prime minister as well did refer to last year on his campaign trail delhi ki sarkar ko na harit kranti chahiye na shwet kranti chahiye uska to bera uthaya hai pink revolution pink revolution what the pm omitted to mention is that cow or bullock meat is banned from export sir you are representing the meat exporters association can you tell us what meat is allowed to be exported from india only buffalo meat is allowed for export is the meat tested by any third party independent party before it is exported about 10 uh, odd uh, big companies which have uh, that's right which have their own state of art slaughter houses which have been approved by the importing country themselves because system is that importing country they send their own veterinarian to see the animal health to see the plant and then approve the slaughter houses for export